Holy shoot! What the? Dude, I was gonna get that thing. I'm beelining for the hay bales and a coyote jumps out of them. That was sick. We're just gonna keep our eyes out. Oh my. There's a monster. Holy cow. He's sucking the air off. <laughs> you ever seen a vacuum seal? Yeah, they work a little faster. <laughs> Good. Someone get the cheese it. Cheese it. <laughs> About to head down to the Arkansas. It's hot season. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm here with the weather update. As you can see, we got us right here. It's about to make it to Arkansas. There's Fayetteville, and as you can see, this green, that's rain. So it's gonna be pushing up. Um, more than likely, we'll get a little wet. It'll probably rain on us a little bit. Probably not too bad though, I bet. But we'll say pretty warm and dry, so. Dude, it's been a minute. That is not 30. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's 30 right here. That's Luke what it says no. I, I say this is 30. Right back where you are. 28. Boom! Wow. <laughs> back up set. 30. Well, that's probably within the 30th yard. Told you, Reggie. Dead. I like that. I think I'm good. What do you say, Red? I like Oops. it. No, those three are good. <laughs> yeah, hit, hit the target. We're good to go. If we kill something, preferably a buck, Cannon said that we're gonna make out right now. <laughs> I did not say that. Yes, you did. You no, said no, it. No, I said, I said, I said, I gotta kiss somebody. And you're like, I'll kiss you. And, like, <laughs> and then you're like, yeah, we can make out while I'm watching. I'll give you a peck. We're not gonna make all out. Alright, alright, deal. You actually got it. On camera. All right. Reagan, if a buck comes out, you shoot it. <laughs> All those girls when they watch that watch that video, they're gonna go crazy. I'm like, I'm like, how was it? How was it? Is he gonna kiss her? Okay, so we're making our way to the lease right now. This was this was a 1 a.m. idea. We were sitting there. Steven said, "Man, I want to go hunting. Not gonna be able to until Thanksgiving." So he started thinking. He's like, "Yeah, let's leave Friday. Go there for a Friday night hunt, and then head back Friday night." Kind of a stupid no, idea. No, Saturday morning. Saturday morning. Okay. So we're sitting there. I was like, there's got to be a better way. So we came up with leaving Saturday. Yeah, it's Saturday night. We got 4.13. We're going to hunt tonight, tomorrow morning, go to church, hunt tomorrow night, and then head back to school. Quick little two-dayer, three sits in the blind. I'm going to get a big in. Nothing's really bad. Oh, yeah, we're really we're looking for the fawns right now. We've seen two or three really big bucks, but just don't want them, so we're holding out for the fawns. Did you see that? There, there's a little ground squirrel right there. You saw a ground squirrel? Yeah, yeah, it took off now. Tonight's not looking so hot, but we got two more hunts ahead of us. Wind has changed. We got 
20 degrees going northeast. Wish we could have seen some deer. Oh well. As Cannon Poor once said, the more you look at nothing, the more you realize it's something. And boy, oh boy, we looked at a lot of nothing today. It's God's creation, man. <laughs> it's beautiful. Amen. If I don't see a deer by the end of tonight, I might shoot Luke. <laughs> All I know is Cannon and Stephen are probably shivering their timbers off right now. They're soaking wet. I'm nice and dry. Feels good in here. I just had a doe coming behind us. She kind of walked like directly behind us, kind of started turning around. I don't think she ever knew we were here. But who knows, she might come out in the field in a second. Uh, we'll see what happens. All right, boys, it's about five in the morning. What time is it now? Uh, it's about 5.30 now. And uh, we're running off about three hours of sleep because we thought it'd be a good idea to go to bed at about three in the two in the morning. About two in the morning is when we went to bed, right? I don't know. <laughs> but we're ready. We're up. It's hunting season. Steven's getting in the truck right now. You can sleep when you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> Grandpa, I'm cold. <laughs> Too darn bad. Excited, dude. I'm so excited. Here's your biscuit. Thanks. of hunting and uh, been out here for about an hour in Mean Reg. I've seen another squirrel and we were just so lucky to see that squirrel because we would so much rather see that squirrel than a deer or yeah. a buck or yeah. even a little fawn, you know? That squirrel is just so it's much better. Squirrel. It was a big it was a big squirrel. It had a nice bushy tail. Yeah it was a good squirrel. <laughs> that's about the most eventful thing that's happened. I would turn this thing off. Okay, just checking in again. Still raining, still haven't seen anything. No, nope, it's so hot. Um, yeah, we're just, we're just gonna keep our eyes out. Oh my, there's a monster, holy cow. He's huge, he's massive. Wish, wish we could've got a shot on him. What? Cherish the moment is high stakes. I used to spend time on my time pay. The way speaker thumping and vibrate. She jump in my bones, make it gyrate. Me and Roger are just sitting there. And he's, he's on his retro bowl, you know, like normal. And, and I hear something down there. I'm like, Reg, Reg, I hear something. And so we look over and we can see something moving. And this deer just freaking takes off down that way. And Reg had pulled the camera out by that time, so. I'll, I'll, kinda, I'll give you an example of what it looked like. <laughs> he was kind of over here, and then it was like a. <laughs> That's pretty much exactly what he looked like. Is that right, Luke? Yeah, that was, that was pretty accurate. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's pretty close. That's pretty close. More than what we saw. More than that? Oh, yeah. Just straight back there. Just a good doe. So. We're upstairs, look out. We got a nice little doe there. We went, we, we got the guns for it. Um, now there's a buck up there possibly, a couple doe. We'll see what happens. A lot more comfortable than the blinds. <laughs> Oh, this little baby's about to hop up and take off. Okay. Something's wrong with that baby. What are we gonna do about it? <laughs> There's one thing I know to do. <laughs> and it ends with a kaboom! <laughs> it ends with some burgers. Starts with a kaboom. Not many burgers from that deer. <laughs> we could get at least four. Alright, so... We're about to eat Sunday lunch, right? We got back from church. We look out in the backyard. 
and there are more deer there than we've seen all weekend in the stand. So uh, we figured we might go try to put a little stock on him, see if there's a buck with running with these does. That's what he said. We're gonna come up. We're gonna come up on those hay bales. Yeah, and we're gonna look up over them right. and see if there's a buck with those does out in the field. All right. Holy shoot, what the, dude, let's go get that thing. <laughs> oh, shit, shit, hey, right there, right there. Dang it. All those. Did y'all see the freaking coyote jump out of the hay bale? Let's go get that thing. That thing was probably stalking these guys, looking for that. That baby. Ah, he's probably gone. Bowing down there. Yeah. But that's what we do tonight. We don't go deer hunt tonight. We coyote hunt tonight. Right here? Here. Because we're having coyote problems. That's what we'll do. I like that idea better. All right. We can go back and eat now. Okay. <laughs> there weren't any bucks with him, but that was sick. Bro. That was sick. That, coyote, that coyote jumping out of the hay bales. Stand, it just stood Dude. there and looked at us. I bet it was. And it was big. It was, was a, a, that was a pretty big, coyote. big coyote. That was a pretty big coyote. All right, let's go eat lunch. All right. I'm stoked to go Kyle hunting now. That's gonna be fun. Alright, so we're about to go sit up on this pond dam and we're just about to call in a coyote and pop him. We'll see what happens. See if anything comes in, I don't know. You better see something. <laughs> ain't so bad. I only gotta find five of them on the ground. <laughs> you think I can afford to pay Dylan Gossett to use his music? <laughs> no. Yeah. Alright boys, we didn't get the coyote. We're about halfway back to Oklahoma now. Uh, I think it's safe to say the deer won this weekend. Um, <laughs> and the rain. The rain won too, but oh, okay. We almost got in wreck here, but we're good. We're good. Reggie. Oh, oh gosh! Um, yeah, we'll see if we make it back. We'll Steven, make it back. Steven's on something, I think. Uh, we're, we're chilling. But I saw a deer. I don't know about y'all. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of a bummer of a weekend. But it was a good time. We had fun. I had fun. Did you good. have fun? I had so much fun, dude. We had a lot of fun. It was a great time. You know, it's not about the hunting. Well, it's about nice. the memories we made along the way. It's about, about the... What's that quote? Uh, not about the destination. It's about the journey. There you go. <laughs> That's good stuff. And we had a journey, I'll tell you. Thank you guys for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time. Peace out. Have a good roll. If you guys are new to the channel, don't click off this video just yet. At the end of each video that you find on this channel, I like to give you guys a quick devotional thought from the Bible that relates back to the video that you just watched. I do this to hopefully encourage Christians within their faith, but I also do it for those who do not identify as Christians to help you guys see who Jesus is and what he has done for you. So if you guys have an extra five minutes, I want to encourage you to stick around and listen to some of these thoughts. What we're gonna be looking at today is actually the quote that Reagan ended the video off with. The quote was, it's not about the destination, but it's about 
about the journey. Now, Reagan was saying this about the weekend that we had just had because ultimately our destination in our mind was that we were gonna go on this trip and we were gonna kill a buck. And obviously that didn't happen, but we did have fun along the way. And that's what Reagan's talking about here. It's not always about that end result, but it's about, in this case, the memories and the fun and the, the fellowship that we had with each other on this trip. But as I listened to this quote again and started really thinking about it, I realized that we can actually relate it back to Christianity. Our destination as Christians, which is having God's kingdom fully revealed to us and being fully in his presence one day in heaven, is something that we look forward to and as it should be. But I feel like sometimes we can get caught up within that destination and forget to live out the journey that God has presently set before us here on this earth. And there's actually an example within scripture of Paul being torn between this destination and between this journey. And we can find that in Philippians chapter 1, and we're going to look at verses 23 through 24. Paul says, I'm torn between two desires. I long to go and be with Christ, which would be far better for me. But for your sakes, it is better that I continue to live. So we see Paul here being torn between the destination of heaven and the journey that we have as Christians here on this earth. And I feel like we struggle with this sometimes in the sense that we are passively waiting for God's kingdom rather than being an active part of it here on this earth until it is fully revealed to us in the future. But with this being said, the question soon arises, well, what is our journey as Christians? And that's what we're going to look into today. If we look over in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33, Jesus tells us this. He says, Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. Jesus tells us to seek the kingdom of God. To seek means to strive or to aim for. I think what Jesus is calling us to do here is to seek to be a part of God's kingdom here on earth, to seek God's will above our own as we live out our lives here. So if that's what our journey consists of, if, if our journey consists of trying to live out God's kingdom on earth, the question then arises, how can we be an active part of God's kingdom on earth? How can we actively live out the journey that is set before us? And in order to answer this question, we're going to go to 1 Thessalonians, and we're going to look at chapter 5, and we're going to look at verses 9 through 11. So starting in verse 9, it says, For God chose to save us through our Lord Jesus Christ, not to pour out his anger on us. Christ died for us so that whether we are dead or alive when he returns, we can live with him forever. So encourage each other and build each other up just as you are already doing. So in verses 9 and 10, Paul is starting to close his letter to the church in Thessalonica, and he's doing that by basically summarizing the gospel within these verses. And that gospel message is that God has allowed us to be saved through the faithfulness of his son. Jesus lived a perfect life of obedience to God to the point of death, his burial, and his resurrection. Through this, he achieved a righteousness that we as sinners cannot attain on our own. But by his grace, God allows us to be made righteous by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. Christ. If we look at Romans 6 and verse 3, Paul says, Or have you forgotten that when we were joined with Christ Jesus in baptism, we joined him in his death? And if we skip down to verse 5, it says, Since we have been united with him in his death, we will also be raised to life as he was. So when we become connected to Jesus' death through baptism, God allows us to be made righteous through the righteousness of his Son. And because of this, because of what God has made available to us through the death of his Son, we have a hope of living one day fully with him within his kingdom. And that is our destination as Christians, living fully with God forever. So if we look back at the verses in 1 Thessalonians, Paul gives us in verses 9 and 10, he gives us the destination. He tells us in verse 10 that when he returns, we can live with him forever because of what Christ has done for us. That is the destination. But immediately following the destination in verse 11, Paul gives us what the journey towards that destination should look like. So if we go back and look at verse 11, the first word we see there is so, or or another word that we could use here is therefore, or even a phrase that we could use is because of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and read it again. Because of this, encourage each other and build each other up just as you are already doing. Now, something I wanna point out here is how Paul is calling us to be an active part of the kingdom rather than just passively receiving it. In verse 11, Paul is telling us to encourage one another. He's not telling us to receive encouragement, but rather we need to be the ones actively encouraging others. Now, I don't want you to hear me wrong and think that I'm saying encouraging each other is the only way to live out God's kingdom here on earth. That's not what I'm saying at all. During Jesus' life and ministry when he was on this earth, he gave us plenty of examples of what it looks like to live out God's kingdom here on earth. And actually, he was the perfect example of what God's kingdom looks like. And there are many different examples within his life and ministry that we can look at and, and try to portray within our lives in order to live out God's kingdom here on earth. But for the sake of this video, we're going to focus on the aspect of encouragement because 
because I think that's something that you can see throughout the friendships that you saw within the video that you just watched. The three other guys in this video, including myself, we all showed up to a college campus about three months ago and had no idea who each other were or even knew that each other existed. And through spending time with each other, we have created a bond by constantly being an encouragement to one another. We're always there for each other, constantly making sure everyone's okay, making sure they have everything they need, and just trying to, to be a positive impact on their life and just being someone there for them and, and someone that they know cares for them. And the guys in this video and many more that, that didn't get to go on this trip have been such an encouragement to me in my faith, just in the way that they, they live out their lives and encourage one another and, and try to, to live out a life that glorifies God. And when they do this and my faith is encouraged, it then encourages me to go out and try to encourage others. I know that's a lot of encouraging going on, but I don't really know how else to say it. And if we're all encouraging each other, everyone's going to feel encouraged. And through that, we will all experience the kingdom of God and his love here on this earth. Now, before this video ends, I want to share with you guys what I believe the, the best and most effective way to be an encouragement to others. I think one of the most effective ways that we can go about encouraging one another is trying to live with the same mindset of Jesus. And that mindset is to humble ourselves and to serve others. And we see that all throughout Jesus's ministry. And a great place in scripture where Paul kind of lets us see into the mindset of Christ is in Philippians 2, and I believe it's verses 5 through 11. I'm not going to read it for the sake of time, but you guys definitely need to go and read that for yourselves. But through this, we will encourage Christians within their faith. We will lead others to faith. We will bring joy to people's lives. We will show others the love of God and many other things. But ultimately through this, we will be active participants within God's kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. So as you go throughout your life, just remember that while the destination is exciting and it is something that we look forward to, that in the meantime, between now and then, there is a journey that God is calling me and that he is calling you to be an active part of. And it is up to us if we want to accept that call.